I mean, I haven't really gone to bed hungry. I mean, I might have gone to bed a little hungry, but not like, like starving. A starving kid in another country where there's famine is a lot different of a look of a student in the United States who's hungry. However, the same impact. And over a period of time, you have very similar diseases that come from not eating enough or well enough. Hi, my name is Ingrid Sennes, and I'm a senior at Verde Valley School in Yavapai County, Northern Arizona. I come from Norway, a country where there are few hungry children. When I came here, I was shocked to learn that one in three children in Yavapai County are hungry. It's a hidden disease. There are more than 15,000 children in Yavapai County who are not getting the food they need. It deeply upsets me that hunger and malnutrition prevents growing children from reaching their full potential. We see students who are truly starving and not getting the food, and then we see a lot of students who just aren't getting the right foods. Children who are hungry and malnourished are at a higher risk to get sick. Children's bellies may be full, but they might in fact be filled with empty calories. People are basically starving themselves of nutrition. Right. What you're doing is you're eating all these foods that aren't very healthy for you, that don't have a lot of nutritional value, and your body is telling you, I'm still hungry. So you eat more. And that's why a lot of people that um, are financially unstable are overweight or obese, is they, their body is craving foods with more nutritional value. Some organizations sponsor programs to help overweight, malnourished children learn healthy lifestyles. I have definitely seen a, an increase um, in children that are overweight. To me, it feels almost exponential. Um, and, you know, we see it as young as age two. So we see kids that have risk factors for heart disease, for diabetes, for liver disease and vitamin deficiencies. Doctor sent him to the fit kids because uh, he needs to lose weight. It was fun, like meeting new people. About food, they taught us which ones are healthy, which ones are not that much. Hungry children have more trouble learning because they lack energy, are irritable, or have headaches and stomach aches. Hi, today we're going to talk about hunger. Has anyone ever felt hungry before? Just put your hand to your heart if you have. Okay. What does it feel like to be hungry? That your, that your stomach's not full. Your stomach is not full. So how does it feel, Melissa? You don't have enough energy to run around. You don't have the energy to run around. And when our stomachs aren't full, how does that feel? Um, you, um, you're hurt because you don't even eat any. It hurts, doesn't it? It really hurts. Hungry children are stressed. They worry about where their next meal is coming from. They worry if their parents can provide for them or if their parents are going without. Hungry children can be anxious or depressed. This eight-year-old girl and her mom, a single mother, describe what hunger looks like for them. I mean, our kids are begging, you know, mommy, I'm hungry, there's nothing to eat. Well, it makes me feel sad when I don't have food in my house. It also makes me feel sad when my mom get, tries giving up her food for us, because then she's not eating and she won't be as healthy. With all of the risks for children, why is this happening? I'm learning some answers include the economic recession, which hit northern Arizona hard. Lost jobs, homes, cars, low pay, high unemployment, and cuts in benefits are still all too real for many families here. 
This mother describes the dilemma of the working poor. From the outside, nobody would know that sometimes we don't have a lot of food. And it's very easy sometimes to go out and look at people and say, well, they're poor, they're not eating well. Um, but I think in this country, we don't realize that it could be our neighbors with the nicer house that sometimes are struggling. The father lost his local job and now commutes more than four hours a day to Phoenix for work. They spend $600 a month just on gas for his travel. I work very hard to keep food in this house. I will do just about anything and everything I need to do as a mom to keep food in this house because I'm a stay-at-home mom, that's my job. So I will go to the food bank. I will go to another place that also helps out with food at times. Um, I will coupon. I will go out to the sales. I will pick up things that people aren't yeah. using. I will look at Craigslist. There's been times I've been on Craigslist and found free baby food. Okay, I'll take it. I'll use it. Whatever it takes. Even with federal programs like SNAP or food stamps and free or reduced priced meals, too many children are still hungry. Many schools and child care providers in Yavapai County don't apply for benefits. Some parents don't know their children are eligible for benefits. Some child care providers are trained to recognize signs of childhood hunger and malnutrition. Unfortunately, too many parents teachers and child care providers don't know the signs of hunger or they are in denial. Community groups have stepped up to meet the growing demand. The Yavapai Food Council has started a neighborhood food program where neighbors donate food to local food banks and pantries. Children of all ages pack fortified mac and cheese for Kids Against Hunger, an international organization. When they learned how many Yavapai County children are hungry, they decided to give half their meals to local children. The food packets go into weekend backpacks for hungry kids right here in Yavapai County. And yet, there are children who are still hungry. It is a struggle to close the gap between what children need to thrive and what the government and community groups can provide. For many children, the only reliable, healthy meal they have is a free or reduced cost meal at school. What about the summer, where there are 12 weeks of no school? And what about the weekends? That's where I got involved. When I first came to Verde Valley School, I volunteered for the Weekend Backpack Program. We meet once a week and put enough food in backpacks to supply the most hungry children with food for the weekend. There are groups around the county who are preparing food backpacks. It's disheartening to think that there are still so many children who could use a weekend pack that aren't getting one. Hunger is a complicated problem that can't be solved by meals alone. Education is so important in the long run. Children learn about good nutrition and where food comes from. Where do fruits and vegetables grow? What? What is the vegetable? Hot pepper. Actually, no, it's not a hot pepper. It's a regular pepper. We do have a hot... Really? Oh, <gasps> They learn about healthy choices, including exercise. Children love working in school gardens where they learn the cycle of planting a seed, watching it grow, harvesting it, and eating it. They learn to love dirt candy. 
Uh, we were growing a whole lot of spinach and lettuce and carrots and um, so we had a day of we just harvested a bunch of it and had salads and we a lot of the kids were a little hesitant at first and then once we made them the salads they were begging for more and they were asking can I have seconds of spinach salad and I thought that was amazing for a bunch of 12 and 13 year olds. This is what gives me hope. We are helping children grow in healthy ways by giving them nourishing food and teaching them about healthy choices. And we're teaching them to help children in need. They, in turn, are becoming the seed bearers. We save these seeds for helping to grow healthier communities healthier nations, and a healthier world. There are many ways you can help.